Hey, this is Jonathan from AJ and Smart, and the video you're about to see is a Q&A that I did with Jake Knapp. He's the author of Sprint, and we were talking about, we were answering a question about user research, and it kind of went down deeper into the whole topic of user research, even though we were first focusing on the Design Sprint itself. So the video you're about to see is from the Design Sprint Masterclass. It's an online course that we have, and we're just taking a few snippets out of it and putting it on YouTube so that you don't have to, you know, pay to see a lot of it and um, yeah if you like it below there's a link to watch a one hour 20 minutes web class where we go deep into you know how to sell the design sprint how to run design sprints all that kind of stuff so you can see that in the link below and uh, yeah enjoy the Q&A hey welcome back to the Q&A part of this course where I'm standing here with Jake Knapp and we're gonna be just answering your questions that you've been pumping into the Facebook group for the last few months and we've got a great one, we've got a doozy. Okay, let's, it's a doozy. let's have it, let's have it. Okay, Andre asks, and I'm gonna set the scene. I'm gonna set the scene, I'm okay. not just gonna read his question. Paint a picture. You're going into the design sprint, okay? You're going into the design First sprint day. with a new client, or it's- That was me yeah. opening the door. It's a creaky door to the design it's sprint. It's a very creaky Stepping door. You shouldn't have creaky okay. doors. You shouldn't have creaky doors in the, in the <laughs> sprint room. You're going into the design sprint, whether it's with a client or an internal team, and the internal team has a lot of biases on what they want to do, on what they think the sprint should be, and what they think the product should be, okay. but they've done no user research at all. It's okay. all based on their own biases. Okay, okay, sure. What, what do you think about that? Well, Because it's, in design thinking, that would be kind of a no-go. Kind of a, yeah, kind of a non-starter. Yeah, so um, this, is a, this is a really good question, and it's, it's tough because if you do research before you come into the sprint, you will always be ahead. Like, you're always gonna be ahead of a team who have, hasn't had a chance to do research. You're gonna know more about your customers. You're gonna be, I think of it almost as like you've already done a sprint. If you've done research ahead of time and you're able to present it effectively and the team believes it, now that's an important question because for many teams, actually, if they don't already believe in research, you may not be able to just convince them like this is the right way to do yeah. it, listen to us. So. Part of the idea with the sprint is it's a Trojan horse for research. At the end of the week, the team, even a team who's totally averse to, to research, will be really hooked on the idea of learning whether their prototype, whether their solution works, and they're gonna see their customers react to it, and their like, research is gonna happen by the time the week is over. But um, there's a sort of bigger question about whether, like, where good ideas come from. Where do good businesses come from? Good, you know, sort of innovative products, if you like. Where do they come from? Like, do they come from doing exhaustive customer research, talking to people and sort of discovering what their needs are and, you know, sort of empathizing with them or what, whatever? Um, or do they come from the insights that, that, you know, people in business have, you know, they, the, the way the workers or the folks on the team are thinking about the problem. And, you know, I, I, I want to say that they come from doing research and from really understanding customers, but I, I think quite often they actually come from people just having an insight, you know, someone who knows a lot about a technology saying, I think there's something really cool we could do with this technology yeah. and I think we should do it. And you know, a lot of those ideas fail. A lot of those like technology driven or business driven ideas, they do fail. But I think that what, where the magic really happens and if you look at the products that we all use every day, the products that are success stories, what happened was somebody had an insight and then they were able to figure out how to take that idea about a technology or a new business model or a new service model and then they were able to figure out how to really make it fit well with yeah. the customer. They were able to sort of build a bridge from this, this, this crazy idea that they had, this sort of brute force, maybe this wasn't like something that really made sense to people right away and then they figured out how to make it make sense to people and maybe they had to like change the way people actually behaved and the way people operated. Like, I think Airbnb is a really good example of this, you know, and those are designers who started that company. Um, they had this idea about this home sharing thing that honestly, like when I first heard about it, it sounded a bit creepy, you know? I mean, it's like you're gonna be staying in somebody's place and like, they had to sort of also change people's expectations in the world. They had to figure out how to build that bridge. And, and they did it by taking their crazy idea, you know, and, and their sort of insight into the business, into the service, what was capable with, what was possible with technology. And then they like figured out how do we make this fit the customer? But it's like the insight or the inspiration or the opportunity first, and then figuring out how do we make this fit? Not every insight will even be possible to fit to people. And it's not to say that I'm sure there are stories where people just started with exhaustive discovery research and then came up with something, but I don't know those stories. The yeah. stories that we all, like the products that we all know, the businesses were so successful, they started the other way. So in a sprint, I'm okay with starting with the company's insights and then seeing what happens. Yeah, I think that's a great thing about the sprint. You can start with a lot of assumptions 
And those assumptions are going to be challenged on the user testing day anyway. Yeah. And it is true. I think like there's there's some context that people need about around user research. Large companies, let's say like a company like Slack today, they wouldn't have started with user research. But today, when they want to tweak little things and they want to do like small yeah. tweaks to the like conversion funnel, or they want to add new features, today when they're already established. That's when they start building personas. That's when they start going a little bit deeper into user research. But often at the start, personas it is whole other time. personas. Let's not. Even, <laughs> but that's when they really start doing research and really trying to figure these things out. The same with Netflix. They don't. They don't start with that. Like companies think they do. Yeah. But this kind of kind of almost like misinformation spreads around from these companies yeah. because they show that they do these processes and people yeah, think they did right. them at the start. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And I think you know it's also. There's look. There's this. I don't want us to be coming down too hard on like design in general because, of course, like we we think those those things are important. It's important yeah. to know your customers. It's important to do product work that fits your customers' lives. It really does matter. I think that the there's just sort of this philosophical approach about whether you try to convince the team that there's a sort of golden perfect way to know your customer and like we must do like our design and our research this way or whether you try to help your team mm. and i think that the i mean the design sprint my standpoint was i had i had tried in the past before doing this to like figure out what the golden way to do design was and i'd sometimes tried to convince people look this is the right way to do it we should do it this way you know you should feel guilty if you're not doing it right but the reality is i don't know that there is a golden way and, Instead, it's besides, like the design design sprint, sprint. besides the design sprint, besides the design. In the design sprint, you're you're really just trying to be helpful. It's like, look, whatever you're trying to accomplish, team, and that might be that you are dead set on this one solution. The design sprint's going to try to help you get there. Now, along the way, it's going to turn out that you're going to do a lot of design work. You're going to consider carefully different viewpoints within your team. You're going to put it in front of customers, and you're going to find out really quickly if that's actually something people care about. You're going to do all those things that as as designers, we often want to do those things will happen, but they're not going to happen in a way where you're trying to like convince somebody, like force them down, like just like you know, ram through your your vision or make people feel guilty. Instead, you're going to be helpful. You're going to be helping them along the way. So you'll take their energy and their enthusiasm for their solution. You'll help them. Perhaps they'll be right. If not, you'll have shown them a way to learn. And I think that's what it's all about. To, to me, that's a better way and a more fun way to work together. Great. Great answer, Jake. Oh, oh, thanks. That thanks. was amazing. Thanks. Hope you're enjoying the course. See you later. See ya. So welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, it got a bit, uh, I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of controversy. I'd love to know what you think about user research. Um, maybe not just related to the sprint, but just do you think uh, do you think products need user research, especially new products? Or do you think that it's gonna kind of make them a little bit too vanilla? Or do you think it's just like extra work that doesn't need to be done? I'd love to know that in the comments. So I hope you liked it. Give it a like if you enjoyed it. Um, subscribe if you, if you haven't already. And as I said earlier, there's a link. The first link below is to a one hour, 20 minute web class where I go through pretty much every little thing about why we as AJ and Smart got into the design sprint and um, you know, tips on how to run it, tips on how to sell design sprints if you're interested in that. Um, but yeah, that's it. Have a good one. Bye-bye.